Good morning. Today, I actually want to talk about dividends, one of my favorite subjects. And specifically, I just want to show a big dividend that came in uh, yesterday. You can see it right here. Um, we can see it's for $643.48. It's from Industrial and Commercial Bank of China. Um, now, when you're owning foreign businesses, foreign stocks, there's a little bit uh, of tax associated, foreign tax withheld, um, 64. I believe that comes back to you at tax time based on tax treaties uh, between countries, but you need to ask your accountant or CPA on that one. Um, the ADR fee, 39. So 643, so $540 was reinvested back into Industrial and Commercial Bank of China. Um, so you can see that it bought um, 48.957 new shares of Industrial Commercial Bank of China at $11.03. Um, why do I want to showcase this? A couple reasons. Um, the first is uh, there are a few things that make me as happy uh, as rolling out of bed in the morning in my pajamas, logging into my brokerage account and seeing $643 dividend with no labor, no job, uh, no invoices submitted to clients, um, no employees, uh, nothing but capital. Meaning the ownership of this particular share entitles me to this particular dividend. And it's a beautiful thing. And, you know, the older I get one and the more I have really immerse myself in financial education, um, financial literacy, financial IQ, um, constantly reading uh, biographies on different investors, uh, different seminar type of uh, courses, and, and just really just, just again, you use the word immersion is probably the best um, word. One could use obsession, but let's just use immersion. The more I come to understand that um, the path is through passive and portfolio income for me. Um, one of the things, you know, especially on YouTube, there's this cult of the businessman or the cult of the entrepreneur, uh, and that's fine. And, and that may work for some people. But for me, it's more about passive income in real estate and capital appreciation and dividends in the stock market. Um, I, I don't run a business. I don't have employees. I don't have a brick and mortar location. I don't have a product I'm selling. I'm not a supplement company. I'm not a gym. I'm not a, uh, a restaurant, a nightclub. You could go on and on. I simply possess capital. Uh, it's truly the, the definition of capitalism, right? I'm just allocating capital. And I just feel that that skill isn't as glamorous, isn't as popular, but uh, I, I feel it's as consequential as the businessman, the entrepreneur, the go, go, go guy. So anyway, so, you know, this is, um, this is fascinating. Now, the other thing that's of, of note here is that, um, and this sort of ties into my monthly letter where I talk about the U.S. and China, um, that basically the... Industrial and Commercial Bank of China is the biggest bank in the world by assets, which is unique here. So let's let's go over here. Um, and this is a list here from Statistia. That's right. Um, largest banks globally as of December 2020 by assets. You'll notice the three biggest banks in the world are Chinese. Actually, the four biggest banks in the world are Chinese. Industrial Commercial Bank of China, which is that dividend there, China Construction Bank, Agricultural Bank of China, Bank of China, and then we have a Japanese, and then J we go to JP Morgan. So um, I own all, all four of those Chinese banks. I also own JP Morgan as well, um, which looks like it's number six uh, on the list. Um, but it just kind of goes to show you, you know, that there, the 21st century, in terms of capital, in terms of power, um, is going to be this great uh, conflict, it doesn't necessarily mean war, but this great competition between China and America. That it's one's going to be 1A, one's going to be 1B. And, and sure, Russia's there militarily, um, 
but I saw that its economy is that under Spain. So it's, it's kind of an aged boxer with a big punch, you know, meaning it still has nuclear weapons. It still, um, can, you know, attain a, what is it? Mad, uh, mutually assured destruction in a war. Um, but its economy is not that of China or the U S. So, um, this is a, a cool chart to be able to see that, especially like the rise of China. Um, and, um, yeah. And then the other thing just to mention along with this dividend is, and I came across this this morning, um, from Robert Kiyosaki, and he's definitely one of my mentors, not in person, but just, you know, the rich dad channel and just, um, just this whole worldview syncs with mine. And, um, he published something here called the myth of the rich doctor. And, um, and it's something I would truly believe in it. And it sort of goes back to the earlier part of this video when I talk about my goal is not to have earned income, which seems crazy to some people is to almost be, be like afraid or scared or, or, um, you know, just pushing it away, earned income. Uh, whereas other people, that's like what their main pursuit is, is earned income. And so, you know, obviously there's that cliche of like, oh, you know, to, to your kids, like I want them to be successful and, you know, be, be a lawyer, be an accountant, be a doctor. And so you might add lawyer and accountant also to this, you know, it's a, just the myth of the rich doctor. But he just says here, many doctors are high earning professionals. They can make 250 to 500 or more even more in a year, but they aren't really rich at all. And then he goes on to talk about, you know, the student debt that it takes. And basically they're just a, a high earning professional. Um, now you might think uh, 250,000 to 500 a year is rich. But again, if you have student debt, if you live in country clubs and if you drive Bentleys or Mercedes Benz and you, you sort you go out to dinner three, four nights a week, you take three trips a year, um, you know, you're just sort of living an upper class lifestyle, um, but you really don't have wealth uh, and they're different things. And, and I live in an area, I live in South Florida uh, in Boca Raton, which is oftentimes called the Beverly Hills of South Florida, or excuse me, the, yeah, the Beverly Hills of Florida. And it definitely has that, like the kind of fake rich feel to it where you have um, a lot of flash. And not saying all of it is fake. Of course, there, there are very wealthy people here, but you have a lot of keeping up with the Joneses and you have a lot of people like when you peel back the onion, sometimes there's no there there. Um, uh, there's a great book, The Psychology of Money by Morgan Hassel or Hussel. And he talks about um, a situation when he lived in Los Angeles and, and Boca very much has a Los Angeles vibe to it like that is sort of what I'm saying, which is like a flashy, glamorous, uh, so on and so forth. And he talked about a situation where this guy, Roger had a Porsche, had this big house, but had no wealth. And when his Porsche was gone, he asked him what happened to the Porsche. And he said, and he said it like, just as if, you know, stating what the weather was, Oh, it got repossessed. Um, and you know, and the guy said, there are a lot of Rogers in Los Angeles. And, and one might say there are a lot of Rogers in, in Boca Raton. So it's um, for me, it's important to kind of keep that spirit of Omaha, if you will. So that I'm referencing Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett to keep that sort of middle America um, sense of frugality um, as opposed to the flash. And, um, you know, so that's something that's something that I really um try to maintain, uh, even as my wealth increases, you know, so, um, so there it is. So, you know, this is the update for today, um, industrial bank of China. And as I said, in last month's, um, seeking alpha essay, you know, I own the five biggest Chinese banks, the dividends now are in the, you know, five, six, sevens. Uh, if I choose to hold those, it'll be fascinating to see in 10 years through the power of compound interest and dividend reinvestment, what those dividends amount to. Plus, I have another position, a Russian position, Gazprom, um, that also is a big dividend payer. So um, between those five Chinese banks and Gazprom, it'll be fascinating. Maybe at some point in 10 years, it's a 10, 12, $15,000 um, dividend for, for the month of uh, for the months of June, July and August is usually when they hit. So, um, so we'll see, but it's fun to kind of track these things, um, on seeking alpha and, and on YouTube to be able to look back and say, Oh, wow, this, this did happen or this didn't happen. Um, 
that's it for today. I'm actually going to do a, another video on the software I'm, I'm obsessed with, Composer. I'm going to do kind of um, a permutation of my balanced alpha, but um, focused on inflation. So it has some gold funds in there um, as opposed to more of the, the leverage bond funds. So anyways, that's it for today. Um, feel free to comment. I appreciate all the uh, likes and subscribes. I'm just from doing these little series of videos. I think I've gotten like another 15 subscribers just in the past um, few weeks. So that's uh, that's nice. But um, yeah, appreciate all that and take care. Ciao.